Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today experiment is heat exchanger in a tube heat exchanger. So um, actually if you have a fluid that flows through a pipe, so the quantity of heat transferred can be calculated either by using the change in the internal energy. So Q equal uh, mass flow rate of the fluid times specific uh, heat Cp times delta T, where delta T is the difference between uh, temperature inlet and temperature outlet, Tb1 and Tb2. Also, Q can be calculated from the, uh, if you know the con uh, convection heat transfer, H, so Q equal HA times Tw minus Tb, where Tw is the temperature of the wall or the pipe surface, and B is the average bulk temperature, so it's equal to TB1 plus TB2 over 2. So the difference between TB1, average of temp bulk temperature, TB1 plus TB2 over 2. Uh, so if the wall temperature is varying along from point 0.1 to point 0.2, so we can calculate by the log mean. So log mean temperature is delta T1 minus delta T2 over ln delta T1 over delta T2, where delta T1 is the difference between TB1 and wall temperature, pipe temperature, wall temperature at this point, and TB2 on the other side, TB2 minus wall temperature. So this is delta TLM. Now, this is very important principle because we'll apply it in the equations for heat exchanger. Now, heat exchanger is we use it for cooling or for heating fluid using another fluid. So the simplest one of heat exchanger is the tubular heat exchanger. So we will start the uh, principles of tubular heat exchanger. Now we have a fluid one and fluid two. So one of them is hot and the other one is cold. So we can heat, transfer the heat between them. So either to heat one fluid or to cool the other fluid. And here, uh, we have, uh, you have the general formula for the heat exchanger is U overall heat transfer coefficient, A, the surface area of heat transfer, and delta TLM. So why we use overall? Because we have, we don't use only convection. We have a convection in the outer fluid and another convection in the inner fluid. And we have also conduction. Uh, in the inner wall where the fluid heat transfers from fluid 1 to fluid 2. Uh, now, the fluid can, uh, two fluid can be in the same direction, same directions like this, or fluid 1 can be go from one side and fluid 2 can go from the other side. That means we have co-current or counter-current. So in case of co-current, Put, suppose that we'll put the hot fluid in the inner tube and the cold fluid in the outer tube. So co-current, well, two fluids are passing or are uh, flowing in the same way. So the temperature uh, distribution will be, if this will be the, uh, along the height, the length of the heat exchanger. So now the hot fluid will be cold and the cold fluid will be uh, become hot. For the counter current, it's opposite direction. So hot fluid from left to right and the cold fluid from the other side. So now the fluid, hot, will be cold and the cold will, be it will start from the other side so it will be heated. Okay? Now, as you can see, we said we, for the uh, uh, transfer of heat, we have driving force. And driving force is delta T, the difference in temperature. When difference in temperature increase, we have a driving force and maximum heat transfer. Now for the co-current, we have here high driving force only at start of the heat exchanger. But suddenly, the driving force decreased to be minimum. So, the co-current will be not efficient for heat transfer, while in counter-current, the driving force is equal for all parts. So 
counter current will be more efficient for heat transfer. That's why it's probably used than co current. Okay, now let's take a cross section. So we have outer pipe and we have inner pipe. So the outer pipe, we have outer thickness, so it has a thickness. So this is the outer one, DO, and the inner thickness is DI. So that's why I, I call D, DO, D capital, uh, refers to the larger pipe or the outer pipe, and D small refers to the inner pipe. So and O, the outer wall or outer diameter, and DI for the inner diameter. Similarly, DO, small, for the uh, outer diameter, and DI for the inner diameter. Now, we assume that we have a hot fluid that heat transferred from hot fluid to cold fluid. So here we have cold fluid, and here we have hot fluid, and heat is transferred from the hot to cold. So we have three types here. We'll, uh, of course, we'll cancel uh, the effect of radiation. So uh, we have convection, convection from the hot fluid until it reaches the wall. So Q equal HI, AI, delta TI from the uh, bulk until the wall. And for the conduction, once temperature here, here also will be some heat transfer through the wall, the inner wall thickness. It equal to its radial heat transfer. So, radial, so we'll apply the equation of radial heat transfer conduction. So, two by K L delta T for conduction ln R O over R I. R O is the outer, and R I is the inner, outer diameter, uh, outer or radius, and outer and inner radius or diameter. And then we have convection again. So heat, then the surface will be heated, so it will heat the outer fluid. So it's reconduction, convection again, so HO, AO, delta T, O. Now the overall equation for the heat exchanger, as we said, Q equal UA delta T L M, the logarithmic temperature. Now, <coughs> delta T L M, so it will be the summation of all differential temperature. So it will be delta Ti from the inner convection plus delta Tc from the conduction plus delta To, the convection for the outer fluid. Now, if I replace or rearrange the equation, so just delta Ti equal Q over H I A I. So Q over H I A I. And also here delta T L M equal Q over U A. So Q over U A. And similarly, we can get this equation Q over U A equal Q over H I A I. Uh, Q over conduction delta by K L ln R O over R I plus convection Q over H O A O. Now Q is constant because it's conservative quantity through the fluid. So by if we uh, divide it all by Q, so then one over U A equal one over H I A I. One over two by K L ln R O R I plus one over H O A O. <coughs> now, uh, for A related to overall heat transfer coefficient, <coughs> we either can use the inner diameter for the inner tube or the outer diameter for the out for the inner tube as well, because heat is transferred from here to here. So we are limited or we can only use the inner tube because this is uh, uh, between the inner fluid and outer fluid. So we are uh, either choose the inner or the outer. But pay attention that if you if you uh, will use the UO, so it will be AO. So UO 
AO for the outer diameter will be equal to UI AI for the inner diameter. So now, suppose that you will use the AO, the outer diameter. And the outer diameter is by DOL, this one. Because it's surface, it's surface. And for the AI, it will be by DIL, because it's also surface heat transfer through the pipe. Now, if I use the outer, the outer one, so 1 over UO, AO, will be equal to the same equation. Okay? Then, I can multiply the equation to AO, so it will be, uh, of course, for this one, AO over AI, and here to multiply AO, and AO will cancel the AO here, so it will be 1 over HO. Also, if I want to use the, this part instead, so now 1 over UI AI will be this part. So similarly, like this one, I can get my final equation to be 1 over UI equal 1 over HI, and same equation. If the thickness of the inner pipe is negligible, so it doesn't have any effect on the equation, so this part will be cancelled because there's uh, no um, resistance to the conduction, so this part will uh, be uh, neglected. And one over, uh, you can, uh, there's no difference between uh, <coughs> O or I, so only there's one radius, the radius of the inner tube. There's no thickness for them, so this part will be cancelled, and it will be only UA. And uh, sometimes it be uh, for some equations, just to tell you cancel the uh, or ignore the uh, res the resistance of the inner uh, inner pipe. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, <coughs> so this is my final equation. This one or this one? It's my final equation. So now I can use this equation to find the overall heat transfer coefficient for the heat exchanger. So now, of course, uh, AO and AI, I can determine them because it's by DL, by DL, okay, by DI or by DO. Now, I have to find the HO and HI for the fluid. So in order to find them, I can find them using Nestlet heat exchanger number, Nestlet number, so Nestlet number equal H L C over K, where H is the heat transfer coefficient, okay, L C is the characteristic length, and K is the conductivity. And here you have to pay attention between Nestlet number and byte number. Byte number also H L C over K. But the physical meaning of both are different. Byte number, when you have a solid, solid, lumped solid, and you want to determine if this solid if, or this shape is lumped or not. So you measure the heat resistance inside the body itself. So the characteristic length here will be V over L, okay? and H will be for the fluid, and K will be the shape itself. But for Nisselt number, we use it for fluid, determine the amount of heat transferred in the fluid from the wall. So if you have a wall, and you, this wall, and you have a fluid, so you test the amount of heat transferred, or you compare, you compare the conduct, conductance, heat transferred by conductance to heat transferred by convection. So here, so you can assume that it's fluid property, fluid property. So K here will be the conductivity for the fluid, not for the wall. And H, of course, for the fluid. Here the characteristic length for the fluid. So for the fluid, then the characteristic length will be diameter. So now, 
for the inner fluid, for the inner fluid, uh, okay, for the inner fluid, this is the inner fluid, and this is the outer fluid. So this is the fluid property, this is the inner fluid, so the fluid only flow in the inner tube. So it will be the eye. Okay, now for the outer fluid, we can't use DO, uh, or sorry, DI, D capital I, because it's not plug flow. It's not plug flow, because we, we have some area, there is no fluid pass through. So you can use what is called hydraulic diameter. Okay, any fluid that flow through any circular shape plug flow, so you can have to use hydraulic diameter. What is hydraulic diameter? Hydraulic diameter is 4A per perimeter. Area is area of uh, fluid flow and perimeter is the weighted perimeter, surface, weighted surface. So here, the area, we have fluid pass through this area only. So the area of fluid here will be the area of the outer pipe minus the area of the inner pipe. So it will be AO, this one, so it will be by di squared over 4, di squared, take care, because it's not do, because the fluid only pass inside. So the thickness here doesn't include it. Minus by do over 4 squared. Uh, uh, so now the, this is also do, not di, because here there is no fluid flow in the thickness. So I have only this fluid. So it will be by d squared o over 4. Divided by weighted perimeter. Here I have two weighted perimeter. This surface is wet and this surface is wet. So it will be by di plus by do. So okay, uh, then we can take by and 4 as uh, a common factor, so it will be cancelled, and here also by as a common factor, so finally I can get di squared minus do squared over di squared plus do squared. Now, uh, as you know, di squared minus do squared is uh, di plus do times di minus do, and we here have di plus do, so this one will be cancelled by this one, so the hydraulic diameter is di minus do. So now, we'll apply for the outer flow, it's annulus flow, so it will be, uh, the, the characteristic length will be di minus do. It's very important to pay attention. Also, <coughs> in some cases, the diameter is not given, instead, only the thickness is given. <coughs> so you may ask, give you the, for example, the, uh, um, give you the thickness, give you the diameter of the inner pipe, and give you the thickness. So you can find the outer diameter by inner diameter plus two tau, two of the thickness. Why? Because as you know, this is the inner diameter, and this is the outer. Uh, this is the inner um, radius, and this is the outer radius, so we have tau as a thickness. So now RO will equal to RI plus tau. And as you know, DO equal to 2RI, so DO equal to 2 times RI minus tau. So it will be uh, DO equal to DI plus 2 tau. Okay. Now, then we, uh, to calculate HI and HO, we can use this nested number to find the uh, HI and HO. But in order to find, we have to calculate the nested number. So nested number can be calculated empirically. So if the nested number is laminar flow, and I have constant heat flux, so it will be constant value, 4.39. In case if you have turbulent flow, so you can use the formula, nested number equal 0.023, Reynolds number, powered 0.8, Brennan number, powered N. And N, in case of cooling, 
fluid, it will be 0.3 in case of heating fluid, 0.4. Here also pay attention because cooling fluid means hot fluid that is cooled, not cold fluid. Some students use cold fluid. No, it is cooling fluid. That means hot fluid is cooled. And here's heating fluid. That means cold fluid is heating. Okay? Or you can use another uh, empirical formula. So, initial number equal 0.027, result number, present number 0.33. So, both can be used. <coughs> and here it's very important to, uh, when you want to determine the, uh, the properties, I mean the viscosity, the density of the fluid, you have to determine at the mean bulk temperature. What's mean, mean bulk temperature? Again, you have to check the temperature of the inlet temperature of the outlet, take the average of them, and then find the related density, related uh, viscosity at this mean bulk temperature. So now Reynolds number, as you know, Reynolds number equal dv rho over mu. So V equal Q over A. So we can replace it, so it will be dQ rho over a mu and as you know also q times rho equal mass flow rate so you can use the mass flow rate over area times mu now <coughs> we want to determine d and area so for inner flow for the inner flow it's easy because we just d represent di and the area is by di squared over 4, so it's much easy. But the tricky one is for the outer fluid, because it's not plug flow, it's annulus flow. So d here will be the dh, and as we said before, dh we got it um, where it is. Yes, dh here is di minus do. So dh here for the outer fluid will be di minus do. For the area, Area of flow. So we have outer area minus inner area. So the outer area is by di squared over 4 minus by do squared over 4. So if we take the by, uh, by over 4 as a common factor, it will be di squared minus do squared. And pay attention for this because some students make like this, by over 4 di minus do overall squared, uh, overall squared. So you just take the hydraulic diameter and make it squared, and this is wrong, okay? di squared minus do squared, because two area, difference between the two areas. For the present number, Moment number, physical meaning of present number means moment, momentum diffusivity over thermal diffusivity. So momentum diffusivity is the uh, kinematic viscosity. So it's equal to uh, dynamic viscosity over rho. And thermal diffusivity, as you know, it's K over rho Cp. So it will be uh, mu over rho, rho times the uh, uh, opposite, uh, rho Cp over K. So it will be mu over uh, times Cp over K, present number. And present number should be calculated at the mean bulk temperature, Tb1 plus Tb2 over 2. For each fluid, if you want to calculate it for the hot fluid and for the cold fluid. <coughs> so by this, if you uh, uh, put all these items to the equation, okay, you can finally find Ui or Uo, the overall heat transfer coefficient. So this is the theoretical way or empirical way to find, to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient. In order to find the overall heat transfer, uh, overall heat, trans, uh, uh, overall heat transfer coefficient for the heat exchanger, experimentally, we can apply this equation. Okay, Q equal U A delta T L M. So if we plot Q Again, it's delta T L M. We the slope will be U A. 
So if the u is i, the a should be i. And if the u is o, a should be o. Q, we will uh, get it from the experiment. We every time change the, uh, you, you have different ways to change the q in the experiment. Q equal m c p delta t. So you either change the flow rate or you can change the initial temperature. Here in today's experiment, we'll change the flow rate of the cold fluid, so it will affect, and then we can calculate the CP, and you can find the delta T. And then you can find Q and find the related U. So you can, in this experiment today, we will make two experiments. We'll make one experiment for co-current flow, and we'll make it for counter-current flow. And for each one, we'll change the Q three times at least, in order to get the slope and to repeat the same for the other uh, um, countercurrent flow. And then for each case, we compare the empirical formula with the uh, experimental one. So this is all for today's experiment. Now we can start the real experiment now. Thank you. Uh, today, this is the uh, heat exchanger experiment. And we have the tubular uh, heat exchanger setting. So now we have two sets. We have hot fluid circuit and we have cold fluid circuit. And this valve to control the amount of flow rate. Also we have inlet and the return. So I can connect the hoses to the heat exchanger to uh, choose my setting if co-current or counter current. Also here we have different screens. This part is for the hot fluid circuit and this part is for cold flow circuit. We have inlet temperature, we have outlet temperature, and we have a middle or intermediate temperature. So this is initial sensor, we have middle sensor, and we have outlet sensor. And the same for the cold water, we have inlet temperature, we have outlet temperature, and we have a middle temperature. And this screen for the flow rate, liter per minute. Also here, this screen for setting the temperature. Uh, so I'm setting the heat, uh, the hot water temperature. So now I, I put in uh, 60. I can increase or decrease using this uh, uh, buttons. Okay. Also, this is the pump. Okay. And this is the main switch. This is the main switch to close or to switch on the experiment. Okay. We put the hot. We put the water here and then put, uh, set the temperature and wait until it's almost constant. Then we can start our experiment. So now for the setting, okay, now this is the inlet of hot water. It's connected here, okay, and the return is connected on the, okay, this is the hot water. Okay, so now hot water is connected to this pipe, this part, Okay, and the, this one for cold water, the inlet of cold water, connected for the other side. So that means the flow is counter, counter current flow because they are not in the same way. One from the, this side and the other one is from the opposite side. Okay, so my setting now is for counter current flow. So now I just wait to until the temperature is fixed, then I can take all the data. Okay, this is for the first run. And then you can, we want another Q, so we can change the flow rate, either the hot or the cold, you have the choice. Okay, so the, now this is a cold water flow, so this is a cold circuit, so I can change it. Now you can see I'm decreasing the flow rate, the number is decreased. So the number decreases now. So now just wait until the new condition is stabilized. How to know? So just when the temperature is fixed, you can give, for example, 15 minutes or 20 minutes until the uh, temperature are uh, stabilized. Then you can take the new readings. After that, you can repeat the experiment again and change the flow rate. Okay. And wait for another 
10 or 15 minutes until all temperature is fixed, then take the uh, new data. So this one is for the counter current. Now we finish our counter current. Now we can go for the uh, co-current. Co-current means hot and cold are the same. But before this, we have a uh, first one to stop the equipment because there is water is flowing. So we can pump, close the pump, okay? And close the uh, flow of the water to step uh, from the other side, other side, okay. So, okay, now I close the tap water. Now, okay. So now this is the hot water, it's connected here, and the cold water is connected here. So both hot water and cold water in it from the same way. So that means it's co-current. Now, bump and water flow, the cold water, okay. So we repeat exactly the same steps we did before. So <coughs> at setting, at fixed uh, flow rate, water flow rate, okay, just wait uh, 15 minutes until all data is stabilized, then take the data, and again, you can change the flow rate again, increase or decrease according to uh, your setup, okay, procedure, and wait, and then take another data. So that's it. Very simple and very uh, straightforward way. Hope you uh, find it very useful. Thank you so much.